Hey, it's Pastor Mo, and uh, well, we're going to talk today about the N-word. But you see, I'm not going to use the N-word because saying N-word is kind of cowardice. What it means when I say the N-word is I didn't really say it, but you know what I do? I force you to think it. So I am going to be the kind of guy that I am, and if you know anything about me, I don't pull any punches, and I'm not afraid to talk about the tough issues. Today, we're talking about the word nigger, and we're talking about the impact that the word nigger has. More specifically, we're going to discuss why it is different, not okay, but different when a black person uses the word nigger versus when a white person uses the word nigger. Now, we could have titled this something different, but I just wanted to get to the point. A lot of people have asked this question, usually white people ask this question, hey, Pastor Mo, why is it okay for black people to use this term and not okay for white people to use this term. Let me first of all clarify, my perspective is it's not okay for anybody to use that term. It's a derogatory term. And like any epithet, it's not something that you want to say towards another human being. I was raised a certain way, so I don't use that word. I also don't use any of the other colorful phrases that are used towards any other ethnic group. I don't like to use any of those kind of profane words. Yes, I count it as profanity. So I, I, I stay away from that. And actually, the people that I know of any color, they generally don't use that term either. So the question becomes, why is this so commonplace today? And a lot of that just has to do with our culture and just the way that things are going. But Hollywood and uh, the music business definitely helps to perpetrate this. And you hear so-and-so rapper, every other word out of their mouth is nigger this, nigger that, nigger this, nigger that. And so if you listen to that type of music, then it's kind of hard to not listen to it and say what they're saying. If you say the chorus, it's in the chorus. If you say the verse, it's in the verse. Does that make it okay? No, it doesn't make it okay, but there is a difference. Now, I've heard people try and explain this difference in several ways. I heard some people say, well, the difference is nigga versus nigger. You see, black people say nigga with an A and white people say nigger with an E-R. Guys, the difference is not spelling. It's still the same word. It still has the same meaning behind it. So not a cool thing to say to anybody. I've heard some people say, well, it's kind of like anything else. You, you, if you have a brother uh, and another brother, and, and, and when I say brother, I don't mean brother. I mean brother, siblings, maybe it's brother and sister. They're having an argument back and forth. And they're calling each other's names and they're, they're, they're fighting like cats and dogs. And they may call each other some pretty horrible names. However, they kiss and make up and it's okay. Now let someone in the street an outsider, someone not a part of the family, say the same thing to them. Oh, now it's not okay. Now you've got to deal with both the brothers or b the brother and the sister. Yeah, deal with the whole family because you have no right as an outsider to use that term, monology with them or reference to them, calling them outside of their name, as people like to say. Well, eh, kind of. I can go with that a little bit, but the, the truth of the matter is it's no less disrespectful if I call my sibling a name than if you call them a name. It's still disrespectful. So I can't go with that theory either. Let me share with you why I believe it's different, not acceptable, but different when a black person calls someone else, whether they're black or white, a nigger versus a white person calling them. Let's give the example. A person is walking down the street and they're in a the neighborhood. They go into a grocery store and there's a group of black people there. And this person walking is a white person. And the person walks and the group of black people say to them, hey, get away from around here. We don't want you around here. We don't want your kind around here, you nigger. Well, that white person is going to be heard and going to be offended. And the emotional impact is still the same However, they're going to leave and the rest of their life is probably not going to be impacted. 
Same situation reversed. A group of white guys are standing around and a black person comes along and they say, hey, we don't want your kind around here. Get away from around here, you nigger. Well, then there's that emotional impact and these kinds of things. However, here's the difference and, and this is the core of why the word nigger is a problem. It's not the word nigger and it's not even the power behind the word nigger or the emotion or the sentiment. It is the impact that the individual has who says it. So if I have a problem with niggers and I'm a black person, there's limited influence that I'm gonna have with this group of people that I'm calling nigger. There is a big difference in when the white person says that. If a white person looks at a person of a different color, of other color than themselves, whether it could be that they're the wrong kind of white. Maybe they don't like Irish people. Maybe they don't like Hispanic people. Maybe they don't like Asian people. Maybe they don't like Native Americans or people from Indonesia. Maybe they don't like any dark skinned person. Then for them, this is a problem because the vast majority of our society's upper echelon is white. So the people who make the admission decisions in Ivy League schools generally are white. The people at the top of corporate America, the people who determine who gets to become the next C-level position in their multi-billion dollar international organization generally are white. The people who are making sure that people are getting approved for bank loans and business financing, again, Generally, these are white people. You see, if a white person runs across a racist black person, they could go their entire life and not be affected at all. However, run across a racist white person and that person of color could find themselves running into walls or glass ceilings in many different areas of their life from judges to police officers, to uh, educators, to admissions people, to loan officers. Again, at, as you get more and more to the top of our society, it begins to get more and more male and it begins to get more and more white. This is just a fact of our culture. Now, is every white person bad? Is every person uh, who is white racist? No. Is a racist white person any worse than a racist black person? No. But the impact, the potential and the realized impact of a white person who sees color before they see character has a lot more impact on the lives of those that they despise than a person of color who is the same. Does it make it any better for a black person, a Hispanic person, an Asian person? It makes no difference. If you're racist, that's sinful according to the Bible. So it doesn't matter what your color is. But in this culture, in our society, as in every society, there is a caste system. And for us, the socioeconomic divide is generally wrapped around color. Now you go to India where they've got multiple castes. It's not so much about color as it is about family background and these kinds of things, but they have the same issue. It's classism, it's elitism, it's sin. And the bottom line is the people at the top are not affected by it. My very first job interview, uh, we lived in, uh, moved to Florida. I had just turned 16, a friend of mine worked at a country club, which was literally around the corner from my house. We live, our, our house was inside of a golf course and, and this whole place called Lakewood Estates in Florida, if you're familiar with St. Petersburg, this Lakewood Estates area was all houses. Now it sounds fancy, it sounds great, but the bottom line is the average price of the house then in the 80s was only $30,000. We're not talking mansions, it was a three bedroom home. And uh, so the mortgage on that was what, 300 bucks? Okay, so my mother being a nurse, it wasn't a big deal. Don't start thinking, oh, he grew up in a silver spoon and he grew up on the golf course, no. But this was often the impression that people had who were of a lesser income. The point of the fact is that this 
was right around the corner. I walk in for my first job interview. In fact, I had on a shirt and a tie and a suit because I had taken BCE, Business Cooperative Education. I had a resume in my hand. I was ready for the interview. I had my questions down on where I wanted to be in five years and why I should get the job and all these wonderful things. And I walk in and I walked into the uh, I, the lounge area and uh, uh, and I couldn't see where to go and I'm looking around and this young lady walks past me and she looks at me, excuse me, can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm here to apply for a job. Oh, the kitchen is back that way. Now this was in uh, 1990, right here in the United States. That wasn't that long ago. I can tell you stories of here recently in, in the late 2000s and, and early 2010s where I've spoken with people over the telephone, they were referred to me as a business coach and, and I speak with them and then when I go see them in person, oh, uh, I thought the guy on the telephone was who I was gonna talk to. Oh, is there a different Maurice there? You see, racism is all a part of it. I can assure you that I've lost business simply because of my colors, very, very clear that that was the reason why, because they were all for it until they saw my face. Now, guys, does this mean, again, that all white people are bad or racist? No, not at all. I'm just saying it's a reality. And until we can get real about the reality and get real about the fact that we're kind of brought up racist. We look at things uh, when we describe things at our dinner table with our children. We say things like, oh, you know, the black person or yeah, the Asian lady. Oh, the white guy. We start out with this mentality of seeing people and we got to stop that. And the place has got to stop first is the church. I'm talking to you, black pastor. I'm talking to you, white pastor. How can you have been around for so many years? How can you have so many pastors on staff and they all look like you? There's a problem there, and we've got to address this. We've got to dialogue about this. We've got to talk about this, because otherwise, Jesus is going to come back, and he's going to be pretty disappointed with his church. That's pretty clear, because Revelation shows us what it's supposed to look like in heaven, and it's just not looking like that in our churches. So, hey, guys, I hope that answered your question. Uh, feel free to ask me anything you like. You know how to get to me, epiclifecommunity.com, 53076, favor, call, or text. God bless you guys.